We've got something like 80 fruit trees and vining plants and dragon fruit. Maybe it's even more than 80 now. We've got a raised bed garden down there, but not everybody has this kind of space to be able to grow trees or to grow plants. I'm Cameron, welcome back to the Busy Gardener channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you two real world examples out there of how people are using public unused space in order to grow fruits and vegetables. And if you stay tuned to the end of this video, I'm gonna share with you three things to keep in mind if you decide to do that. Let's get busy. Okay, I'm really excited to show you this first example of public planting. And this is actually one of my neighbors in my neighborhood. I've not had a chance to meet this neighbor yet, but he has done a fantastic job of using kind of quasi public space in order to plant. This area behind each of these homes used to have these big eucalyptus trees that served as a windbreak when this was all lemon groves, but those have died out over the years from bark beetles eating them and different things. But we're still responsible for the space in between our property and the middle of the trail. And this neighbor has done a fantastic job here. I counted, he has this entire row of fruit trees going all the way the length of his property. I counted something like 30 fruit trees that are gonna turn into a beautiful hedge. And he's got all kinds of variety here. He's got pomegranate and he's got citrus and he's got apricot and plum and nectarine. He's got loquat, he's got figs. He's got a bunch of different types of citrus that I can see. And as you know, it's so fantastic to have a success of ripening, which means you're able to have fruit and then a couple weeks later, you can have another type of fruit. And so with the kind of varieties that he's got here, he's got an entire year of fruiting available to him, which is really cool. Not only that, but he has done a good job of keeping these in the backyard orchard style. They're pruned short and I can see that they're not gonna be any higher than he can reach. They're open center pruning most of them, all of the stone fruit and the apples that he has, I forgot to mention. So he's done a wonderful job with that. He's also whitewashed every single one of these trees, not just the trunks, but also the foliage. And you might not know that, that by doing that, especially in hot climates like this, where we get some pretty intense sun, Whitewashing the foliage can reduce some of that sun pressure on your tree and allow that foliage to remain healthy and, and lush. And he also has done a thing that I haven't done, which I probably ought to do, and that is he's put a metal ring of hardware cloth around the trunk of each of his young trees. And that's really helpful because around here we have some wildlife like rabbits and things that'll come and they'll nibble away at that trunk. They remove that cambium layer, so now that's there's no way for nutrients to go up that part of the trunk into the tree. So way to go. So he's got that entire row. He has against his fence passion fruit that is lining it, which you know I'm a huge fan of that, an edible evergreen barrier, which is just terrific. But he also has the second row of planting and here he's got more of the ornamentals he's got a handful of olive trees planted he's got some agave plant blue agave and another one he's got some other succulents that are here and he's done a just a wonderful job of creating an edible hedge lining his property as opposed to leaving it bare like it is at my place he's done a wonderful job also of mulching i can see here he's got a few several inch deep mulch layer so I wanna get out here and meet this neighbor sometime. I don't actually know how to get to the front of his house. I just happen to drive through here sometimes in my truck. And so this is a great example of what to use. The fact that it's abutting his property is actually really helpful because he has irrigation that is, he's able to bring out to this. And so if you're in public land far, far away, you're not gonna be able to do that. But here he's able to get the best of both worlds. Use land that isn't technically on his property, but also have the resources to make sure it succeeds. Okay, I'd like to show you an example of an even more public type of planting. 94-7, the way Here we are at the second location, and this is a very public area. You see a bunch of cars go by. It's a major street here in Upland, California. And I have driven by this location thousands of times, literally. And I never noticed that there were, first of all, until very recently, that there were trees here at all, fruit trees. But as I got out and investigated, I've been absolutely amazed and how much they've got going on over here. And so I want to play a B-roll of these trees and I'm curious to see how many trees can you spot? Put that down in the comments below. I'll tell you the answer at the end of this segment.
Well, one of the things that I'm so impressed by this homeowner about, aside from planting this beautiful orchard right here and garden next to this very busy street, is the number of trees that he has. Not just the total number, but the number of types of fruit trees that are there. This homeowner, I spotted pomegranate, I spotted fig, I spotted a nectarine, I spotted jujube. There's a ton of citrus, loquat. There are even these cacti that have some prickly pear fruit on it. There are also some of the more exotics, like some of the guava are planted here. So this homeowner has a ton of variety right here, which is so impressive. Something that I also noticed is that he's got some really smart things going on. Again, planting so close to his home, he's able to run irrigation out here, which again, I think is key for keeping your trees the happiest. So if you're able to do that, that's have a water source, that's obviously a plus. But a couple of other things I noticed tucked away in here. He had like a little rabbit or chicken hutch right tucked away behind the trees. And he also has this like a, I don't even, it's not a gazebo, it's a thing that you have some chairs underneath. What is that, an ar, it's not an arbola. What do you call those things? I don't know, but he has a grapevine growing on the top of that and they've got some seating out here. I also noticed that the homeowner had done some grafting. A couple of the citrus had some very obvious grafting done. So this person knows what they're doing and it shows. Planted a beautiful assortment of trees, making the best use of that space. You notice that they've got some rocks down here, but most of this is trees. If you look down the street, it's mostly rocks, big boulders. Like on that side, it's just pine needles. And so this homeowner has taken and extended their growing area out into the street by using this public space and have done a beautiful job doing it. Really beautified the street as you're going down and I've been very, very impressed. I've driven by this place thousands of times and never realized there was this much going on. Something interesting too is when I pulled up to the front of the house, which is not visible from the street, was that they have a ton of different citrus and other stuff growing in the front of their house, which makes sense. So well done homeowner, you did a great job out here. All right, are you ready to find out how many fruit trees I counted in the front here? 60 fruit trees. That is an unbelievable amount of trees in this small space. They've done such a wonderful job. And so that's not counting the stuff in the front yard, that's counting just what's visible for the length of the property over here. Kind of a secret, he's starting to extend it even further than his property. I spotted a couple of loquats, so I don't know what that's about, but I think it's a good move. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? Okay, now the three things to keep in mind if this is something that you are considering doing. The first is see if you can get the blessing of the person or entity who owns that property. If it's public land, maybe get a hold of the city, or if it's a neighbor who's just got some sort of unused space, maybe there's a hill or something. If you can get their blessing and them to sign off on it, say, hey, I'm looking to cultivate this land. I would like to plant some stuff here. Are you okay with that? your chance of success goes way up. Everybody's going green these days with different things and planting is all the rage and so you might be able to do that. You may even have access to irrigation, water for that, which brings me to point number two. You want to keep in mind the inputs that your plants are gonna require. Most trees and most vegetables are gonna require some sort of irrigation, especially if you're in a dry area like we are here in Southern California. And so be thinking through the types of inputs, feeding, mulch, and some of those things that are gonna help your project succeed. And the third thing to keep in mind is the possibility that your project will be destroyed. When you plant on something other than your direct property, you run the risk of either whoever owns and manages that area coming through and taking out your project, you run the risk of wildlife going and destroying it, deer eating it and rabbits, and you run the risk of people just seeing stuff and messing with it. So just know in your heart that that thing is always gonna be on borrowed time. It might be borrowed for 20 years, but it might be on borrowed time. Well, I appreciate you tuning into this episode of the Busy Gardener channel. Hopefully this has spurred some thought on for you. Thank you for those of you who are members of the Busy Gardener channel. Your being members gives me energy and fires me up to continue doing this. Hey, and whether you've got one thing you wanna plant out in public or 500, until next time, stay busy.